I got a uh, warning up front. Uh, this discussion will spoil the story of Indica. So uh, play the game, come back, and uh, let's discuss. Uh, thanks. When I was younger, my wife, uh, who was an art major at the time, was hanging around a lot of artist friends. And we spent a good amount of time in art galleries discussing art history and theory. And I don't know, at that time, I discovered my taste in art and my ability to interpret art in general was not considered sophisticated. I... I like clever art. Art that looks cool, it's easily digestible, surreal, kind of a stupid art, right? I'm so sorry, forgive me. I forgot myself for a moment. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Artists that study art usually find clever art uh, and art that's super obvious with its message to be kind of lowbrow. Uh, unsophisticated or, or just simple or whatever is which is just perfect for me and I find that when I can understand a message or at least interpret the meaning to the best of my ability I enjoy the piece more and, and that's true for games as well I loved Indica and uh, for me this game is an art piece it, it looks great the sound editing and the environmental immersion are top-notch the voice acting is award-winning and the story it's trying to tell is just obvious enough for me to enjoy it and to keep me thinking about how they chose to tell it. First, uh, let's discuss the immersion and the environment building. This game, it's a, it's a looker, that's for sure. Um, it's also surreal at times, but for the most part, it's Russia during the industrial period, probably around World War I or before. And it stays fairly true uh, to that time for the most part. Indica is not afraid to hold back and keep things slow, though, when it's needed. Uh, you're doing tasks slowly, monotonously, with without much real purpose. Some of the stuff uh, is kind of pointless. You move through the snow slowly here in the crunch, and the world around you is just breathing in and out its emptiness, making you feel alone, while your inner demon is there haunting and narrating your every move. It's not quite mocking Indica, but voicing her true inner thoughts, even though she doesn't want to believe it. Every bit of slow tension and environment traversal adds to the feeling of frustration and despair Indica has felt her whole life. It's kind of adding it to us. We're feeling it now, as she has. Didn't want to let her go. Even though she knew there was no place closer to God, she yearned to leave it, at least for a short time. Not true! When we experience the memory of Indica's childhood, we find another story of bad decisions and wrong turns that leaves others hurt. Indica meets a boy and she allows her judgment to cloud with the excitement of this new adventure. And these adventures eventually put her in a bad position and leads to his death and creates a double dose of guilt for betraying her family and for getting her lover killed. So she chooses to come to the convent to remove the guilt and she created by her bad decisions, but with seeing and hearing things that are not there, the sisters never fully embrace her. They're just kind of like, oh man, Indica. And her inner voice explains that very early in the story. And that they actually despise her, even though they have the, the Christian love of taking her in. But every step through the snow or the menial tasks to move the story along has meaning to the characters. But in the end, feels pretty pointless. I believe this is the design of this art piece. You're meant to question why are we doing this? What is our goal? Will it even make a difference, or is it all just pointless points? Points of interest, points of conflict, points in some imaginary jar filling up with a good deed of kudos that are pleasing the creator. Indica is meant to atone for her past sins, and she enjoys giving to others by assisting where needed, even if it is pointless or menial. While playing the game and moving through the world, you'll eventually catch a glimpse of the demon inside Indica. And as with everything in this game, it can be looked at as a metaphor. The demons in her, it, it moves as she moves, it, it exists in the reflection of this horrible existence of Indica's as she is, but as she sees herself. This is most obvious when she sees herself in a mirror and is the demon. You can see Indica's arm move and her body lean forward and the demon is mirroring this movement as she sees herself as a demon and a guilt-ridden evildoer. When the demon splits the world apart, Indica's only salvation is prayer, but it's short-lived because, as with all internal dialogue, you can't go where you aren't. You can't escape your inner demons, and it even remarks that it won't go until Indica doesn't want it to, increasing the torment that she is causing to herself. 
This game succeeds at delivering a very deliberate and clear discussion on right and wrong, good and bad, evil and godly, and from the point of multiple disturbed people, giving us the player an opportunity to examine not only their actions within the time frame we know, but also their discussions. There's no real end to Indica's story because that's the point. Some people may view this game's ending as unfulfilling, abrupt, or maybe as I've felt, intended, pointless. Indeed, at the end, after Indica has lost everything, her home, her salvation, her friend, her opportunity for healing her sick mind, and eventually her body, she's lost all of her life's points. And then she lets the demon take over, and her dark half helps her escape to find the cadets, but as with everything, there's really no point. I think this part of the game I found it very funny, and this could be my dark sense of humor, but all the pointless points and then some could be reacquired, shaking them out of the holy relic. I don't know if there's a limit, but I took it as far as I could tolerate. It was just like, well, man, to shake this thing, keep all the pointless points for me. <laughs> I don't know if there's a limit, but I took it as far as I could tolerate. Uh, what was I rewarded with? Pointless upgrades that meant nothing and go on for a long time. I had to choose each great upgrade for multiple levels, all because I couldn't stop getting the free pointless points. I just like shook it forever. I think I got up to like level 13 or something silly. Once we're done leveling up, we discover the Kudets is pointless. It's empty, made of nothing more than wood and metal stamp designs. Nothing special is inside. And in fact, the pawn shop only traded it for a broken trombone. There are some deep, insightful discussions and stories to be had in Indica, between the voice in Indica's head, but also with Indica and her main companion. I also found the story from the Jailer discussing whether the Chow Killer was a saint was fascinating. That story in particular directly discusses faith and what we believe, or what they believed back then, and how that affects the human perception of what is right and wrong. The serial killer figured that if his children were innocents and they could enter into the kingdom of heaven, free from sin, from punishment, then he would give them that gift. This is a warped view for many, but for the one person who views this act as righteous, how is this act not considered saintly? On one side, he's helping his children and giving them the ultimate gift. But in another, he's just a child murderer that is sick and has mental issues. This story gives us a good idea of what the game is trying to tell us as a whole. Is there a point to all this if we all have different views of our experiences? Who can say what is the right way? We only ever just move forward and do what we in our limited view and experience decide is right at the time. And sometimes those things cause others pain and sometimes it's all pointless in the end. Indica is not afraid to linger in moments and let it settle. It can be slow and prolonged and give scenes time to breathe and feel more real. There are even multiple places where you can just sit and ponder and take in the surroundings and, and listen to the world's machines or the natural environment and nothing's ever said. This can create tension or it can ease your mind and just let you consider what's been said up to that point. It's all up to your interpretation. And what is with all the giant animals everywhere? If you don't look for them, you may not see them, but if you take your time and look, there's a whole bunch of gigantic animals <laughs> And uh, I don't really know what that's supposed to represent. If you know, uh, put it down in the comments down below. The final scene of this art piece is in first person, and this is what got me thinking of my time with those artists I used to hang out with. I immediately recognized that this shift to first person is supposed to mean something. How was I experiencing it? You know, like Indica is free, but she's in the slums and she's surrounded by drunks, mud and shit, dilapidated homes and poverty. Amongst this mess of a world view, we don't see Indica, we only see the world. When she reaches the mirror, we don't see her there either. We see the demon she feels she has become. I think this switch is to make this moment and the moment coming more immersive. The artist really wants us to feel like we're the ones experiencing the revelation and the pointlessness of it all. What's the point when it all goes to shit every time Indica does what she thinks is best? We're still ourselves in the end. There is no cold without warmth, no God without the devil, because they're both us and the inner demons combined. I don't need any deliberations. I know it. I feel it. When you're cold, you don't need to think about it. You just feel it. You know that you're cold. 
Do you understand that there is no cold without warmth? You can't get rid of poverty and suffering, leaving only wealth and happiness. Leave me alone. Oh, I'd love to. But I will only disappear when you stop wanting me to. It's not that hard. Just remember that good and evil, warm and cold, those are just lines on a thermometer. God and the devil, those are you. One cannot exist without the other. When Indica realizes her last hope at some relief is an empty trinket, she lets go and literally loses her marbles on the floor of the pawn shop. Yes, this art piece is obvious in its message, and yes, the marbles at the end was a little on the nose to the allegory of Indica losing her mind, but that's the kind of art I like. I see the meaning, it makes me think, and gives me the message that it's understandable and beautiful. The human experience is dark and twisted, not always full of happy endings, and this game lets us experiencing a short and well-told dark tale of right and wrong, choice and consequence, mental illness from a very confused nun's perspective. This is the kind of art I love, and I, I hope that everyone that plays it for themselves gets the same enjoyment and thought-provoking experience I did. If you made it this far, just thanks for watching. I would love to hear your interpretations in the comments down below. Uh, if you haven't clicked the subscribe button, I'd appreciate if you did that now. Enjoy the discussion down below, and don't forget to like the video. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. What is... Whatever you say. Get up.